Uh, we will start with Gabriel Gonzalez with Cage Side Press. Well, Brendan, it feels like we spoke to you just last week. Can you talk about, I mean, from your point of view, how everything unfolded from last Saturday to getting a new opponent? Uh, everything happened on Saturday, everything. Um, Saturday, they called me around noon. Uh, my manager called me and said that he had tested positive and that obviously he was going to be able to fight. I told him I'd fight anybody they had that night or 205 next week, which is this week. And um, they tried to reschedule us for November 28th, which is the day after my kid's birthday. And I'm not missing my kid's birthday as long as I'm alive for anybody. Um, they tried to reschedule us for December the 4th. It's my wife's birthday. And uh, they said January 13th or 16th, whatever the Saturday is. I said yes. They came back with Jan with November 21st. Told them no, that's my mother's birthday. And um, next thing you know, they came with this, and I was more than happy to take it. And I wasn't going to redo my whole schedule that I had and for a guy that I've already tried to fight twice and didn't happen. So... Um, it worked out great. The UFC, McMahon, Dana White, they all took very good care of me, got me this fight, and um, I'm super happy about it. I'm ready to fight and uh, go home. I mean, so can you describe what the last uh, few days have been like? Did you just stay in Vegas, or was there ever like a one-day go-home, come-back kind of deal? I flew back to Florida on a red-eye Saturday night. I got there about 11 o'clock on Sunday, slept, ate with some of my friends, my family, and then, uh, well, the family that I have in Florida, and then I trained Monday with my team two times, and came right back out to Vegas Tuesday, so a lot of traveling, I hate flying, but um, I wanted to be with my team, I didn't want to train with anyone out here in Vegas, I wanted to get with my team, my coaches, and uh, just get some solid work in with them before know everything and still stay on track to what we were doing so i didn't want to stay in vegas i didn't want to train with anyone in vegas so. gotcha um last one just uh, obviously sean strickland he did fight re pretty recently also just what are your thoughts on him as an opponent and what he brings i think he's a gamer i think he's a good opponent he's got a good name you know he's been in the ufc a long time i think he's got 11 fights um good opponent a uh, good striker Seems to be a tough guy. Like I said, seems to be a gamer. So uh, super excited to just go out there and uh, you know fight a guy like that. He, he's got a good resume, got a lot of fights, good number. He's one and three. So um, I definitely think he's a good opponent, good name, good guy for my resume, and I think it's going to be a good fight. All right. Uh, by the way, is your birthday also coming up soon, or is it just the other members of your family that all have it in the next few weeks? Uh, so it's my mom, my daughter, my wife, literally back to back. And then I'm December 28th. So. All right. So they get a little, little bit of a break to pay you back. That's awesome. Hey, good luck. Thank you. Thank you. We'll go next to Mike Bond with USA Today. Your line is open. Hey, Brenda, I'm just curious. You talked about kind of nailing down the date here. What about the weight? How did you guys reach the conclusion of a catch weight? I know uh, 185 isn't the easiest for you. Is that, so is that something you threw out there? Or was that Sean? Or how did that come about? Uh, I think it was pretty well known that I wasn't going to make 85 again um, just because I didn't know how my body would respond. And uh, I didn't want that to be a problem for, for me physically. Uh, but Sean didn't want to make weight either from what I understood because he had just fought two weeks ago. So uh, I think it was pretty well known. Mick came to me and said it, he thought it was going to be at 200, 205, but he wasn't sure. They wanted to get with Strickland and see what he weighed. And uh, I was good with, with pretty much whatever. So uh, we, they just texted me and said 195. and. Yes, sir. Let's go. Yeah, are you feeling pretty good about you know that weight going into tomorrow right now at this point? Yeah, I don't have to cut anything. I'm already on weight. Uh, that's great. And what matchup do you like better between Sean and uh, Ian? I like Sean better. I think um, it'll be more that I can display. And I think it'll be a better fight for the fans just because he, he's a good striker. He's a, he's a technical guy. So... I think it'll allow us to display more rather than the that in and out little stupid movement that Ian does and just timing it and you know obviously we knew he was going to shoot at some point and try to hold me against the cage the whole time so I think this would be a better fight for sure especially from the fans perspective. 
Yeah, and when we saw him fight just a couple of weeks ago, he was doing a ton of talking in the cage against Jack. Uh, is that something you're preparing yourself for and you're maybe excited to engage him a little bit with, or what do you kind of think of that element? I'd be excited if he does it, but I highly, highly doubt that that's going to happen. I don't give my opponents enough space to talk. Um, that's just not my style. Go in there, we're going to get right, right to business, and uh, we're going to see what happens. Um, that's just the plan. So I, I, I doubt he's going to be talking to me. But if he does, great. I I'll, I'll, I'll love that. Great answer. Appreciate it, man. No problem. We'll go next to Jay Anderson with Cage Side Press. Your line is open. Hey, uh, Brendan. Feels like we uh, just spoke a week ago for some reason. Um, I'm glad this worked. I'm glad this worked out for you. Um, just a couple of quick ones. Um, first of all, you mentioned the Dana White and Sean Shelby and everyone uh, really coming through here. Did you wind up paid your show money for the uh, Ian fight, or uh, is this in place of that? They took care of me. All right, fair enough. And, you know, how concerned were you coming into this week with Ian testing positive that you could have actually picked up the virus after being, you know, close proximity to him at the weigh-in? I wasn't worried about that at all. Me and my whole family have already had it. I wasn't worried about it at all whatsoever. Uh, people try to message me and tell me, oh, you took your, ma your mask off with face-offs. Yeah, I sure did. I wanted him to know that, like, I don't know, you don't know until you've done it, but a face-off is raw. You can you can see in your opponent's eyes, like, what kind of what you're in for most of the time, so... Um, he said some stupid stuff about he was going to break me, so at weigh-ins, which I didn't even know that could be done. But, uh, yeah, so that was my thing. But, no, I wasn't worried about it at all. I didn't, I didn't care. And last one for me. I mean, have you ever – I know everyone's gone through a heck of a weird year this year, and it's been very trying for most of us. But have you ever had a, a year in your professional career like this with an opponent pulling out twice and this kind of roller coaster that you've gone through? No, but – I mean, as far as the whole, like, Ian thinks, obviously, I feel like that's where the questions go you know, towards. It's kind of over the whole Ian thing. If, that, if it happens, it happens. But in order for me to sign a contract with that guy again, there's going to have to be somebody, a replacement in play to know that I am going to fight that night. Because it, it's not like um, I'm made of money and camps cost a lot of money. And by the time I fight, I've already spent the money that I have for the camp so you know financially it's a big stress if I, if I don't fight so like I said the UFC took care of me for this one I'm so grateful for what they've done for me as far as what they did for me for the fight and in this fight and very blessed but it, it is very stressful on me if uh, if I don't fight so in order for that to happen it, uh, there has to be a replacement in play there has to be a guarantee that I will fight that night um, but in regards to Ian, I'm kind of over that. The ship's kind of sailed. For me, if it comes across my desk, obviously I'm not going to say no. I just need to make sure that I'm fighting that night. Um, but you know, it is what it is. All right, well, looking forward to it. Glad it all worked out in the end, man. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Brendan. You're all set. Thank you, buddy.